Hey everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Artisan Pirate here, and in today's fun video, we are going to be cleaning and maintaining the longer Ray 5 20 watt diode laser engraver that, at the time of this video's recording, is the main daily driver laser out here in the workshop. Now, a laser engraver is pretty much like any other tool out in a garage or workshop, and periodically, from time to time, you do need to take time and maintain it and give it a little TLC, a little tender love and care, and keep everything clean to where it can run to the best of its abilities. Keep in mind there's belts, there's pulleys, there's little stepper motors, and of course the laser head itself. And you guys know that my laser is in a proper laser enclosure with dust extraction that pipes all of the smoke and fumes out of the workshop. And depending on what type and style of material you use, it's going to depend on how much grime and dirt and gunk builds up on the laser head and around the laser itself. Of course, sometimes you're laser cutting through very small pieces and they can get trapped in the belts, the stepper motors, things like that. Occasionally, you know, if they pop up or something. So we're just going to go through and clean everything. But please keep in mind the way I am cleaning the laser in today's video is how I personally like to clean the laser. I, of course, have reached out to people on chat rooms. I've seen other people clean their lasers. And this is just what I'm comfortable doing with my laser out in the workshop. It may vary for you guys out there if you have a little bit more experience. Keep in mind, it is a diode laser engraver. It's not one of those CO2 lasers that are way more powerful. And the way I go about cleaning the laser engraver is using some 70% isopropyl alcohol. I believe this was picked up over at Walmart. I also use some Q-tips to get down in there to clean everything and of course some paper towels. Now when I laser cut through the plywood that I like to use to bring projects to life with visually over here on the platform or even the thinner material it builds up gunk and grime on the laser and you will see that once we unzip the laser enclosure enclosure excuse me and get to cleaning everything the last time i cleaned the laser i thought about filming a video just because it was so much grime since i had done it that had been built up because i had been testing various materials and each material you use is going to produce its own smoke its own fumes its own chemicals so to speak that you need to of course have the laser in a proper enclosure so i thought then the next time i go to clean the laser i will of course bring you guys along for the journey and hopefully you guys will pick up a tip trick or a tidbit along the way. So without further ado, let's move the camera closer to the laser and I'm going to hopefully give you guys the best vantage point while we give the longer Ray 5 20 watt diode laser engraver some TLC and do some cleaning and maintenance on it. And over here at the longer Ray 5 20 watt laser engraver, we're going to begin by carefully unhooking the power and the air assist to the laser head and then we will remove the magnets and the honeycomb spool board and then I will begin cleaning the actual interior of the laser enclosure here with a small little cordless vacuum I got for the model train and nostalgia room but it does a great job getting all of those little pieces that form when you do a lot of cuts over at the laser engraver and then I'm going to take some basic rubbing alcohol and paper towels and we are going to clean the belts that the laser rides on and you can see how black the paper towel is becoming and that's just the fumes that are captured in the laser enclosure itself while the laser is running that's why I tell you guys it's important to have a laser due to the nature and the fumes and everything they put off to have one in a proper laser enclosure but now we will begin to clean the head and you can see how all of the fumes have discolored my logo on the laser head itself we'll remove the four Phillips head screws here protecting the fan from the case here and then we can start very very carefully cleaning the laser head of course you don't want to be too aggressive with this you want to take your time with it I'll get a very soft brush here to clean the grime and the dirt from the fan blades itself and you can see all of the stuff falling out onto the paper towels I have there on the workbench again I'm being very very careful here because this is the main part of the laser being the laser head itself that does the actual work on laser engraver projects and again I am no expert at cleaning the lasers this is just what I do to take care of them and clean them from time to time 
I will now take some Q-tips and very, very carefully clean the laser lens itself. Of course, they can get scratched and then you have to replace them. Thankfully, I haven't had to replace the one in the Ray 5 20 watt laser by longer. But you can see how dirty it was. But now we can begin to do our cleanup here and get ready to put everything back together. But before we do that, I want to try to get any small parts and pieces out of the honeycomb spool board itself. Of course, this is what you put the material in when you are laser cutting through something, but I keep it in the laser enclosure for every one of the projects because the magnets help hold everything in place due to the honeycomb spool board being metal. But I'm cleaning everything up here carefully. And now it'll be time to put everything back into the laser enclosure. And I'll be very careful here. Of course, the lasers are very fragile due to their nature and all of the electronics. But I'm now hooking the power and air assist back to the laser head and locking it in place on the gantry arm. And before we step away and close the video itself, I am going to do two small test pieces just to make sure everything is still dialed in and working properly. And we'll use a scrap piece of the quarter inch material I like to use. And we will begin by doing a material test that I designed in the Lightburn software. And it doesn't take long at all to do this test. And you can see from the footage here by the GoPro that I've got zipped up in the laser enclosure, how the enclosure captures all of those fumes and everything. Again, it is key to have a laser like this in a proper enclosure to properly extract all of those fumes. But after I do the material test, I want to do a laser belt alignment test that my buddy Sam at Knighthood Creations designed and he sent to me to test out. And this just quickly makes sure that the belts that we cleaned are properly tensioned all the way around. But I will show both of these test pieces in more detail as we close the video. But it doesn't take long at all to do these two tests. And I do them periodically. But that is how I clean the longer Ray 5 20 watt diode laser engraver. And that, my friends, is going to about wrap it up for today's video. Hopefully, from start to finish, you guys found it informative and learned something when it comes to cleaning and maintaining a basic diode laser out in your garage or workshop. As I said at the beginning, please do not take my word for it. This is just my personal preferred way of cleaning the laser engraver from time to time to make sure it is running to the best of its capabilities in the laser enclosure for making beautiful and creative designs. Of course, when I wanted to clean and take care of the laser, I of course reached out to people on message boards and Facebook groups and some friends that had laser engravers and I was just like, hey, how do you guys or how do you clean and maintain your laser. So this is just information I have picked up along the way and just compiled it into the video over here on the platform today. I do apologize if some of the camera angles were not to the best of their abilities. It was kind of hard to get the camera positioned to give you guys the best vantage point. I know the last time I cleaned the laser, it took me around 15 to 20 minutes to clean it, but in today, it took me around 30 minutes to do it because I was dragging the camera around, you know, trying to get the best vantage view for you guys to hopefully be able to learn something while I was cleaning it. And throughout the process, you guys seen how much grime, dirt, and gunk come off of not only the laser bed itself, the, the rails, the pulleys, the motors, but the laser head itself, all of that grime and dirt came out of it. And that just accumulates depending on what materials you run on your laser and how often you run your laser out in your garage or workshop. Of course, I always encourage anyone to always have their laser, if possible, in an enclosure with proper dust extraction and fume extraction. Anytime the laser was running today in the test that I'm getting ready to show you, I had on my safety UV goggles and of course the air filtration unit was running out in the workshop. I also want to tell you guys that in the past I have also changed the belts. The belts do wear out depending on how hot or cold or humid the climate is. 
that you are in wherever you are in the big wide world and these are for 3d printers for the belts but they actually fit the laser the longer ray 520 watt diode laser that i have in the enclosure again at the time of this video is recording it is still the main daily driver laser out here in the workshop but of course i have looked at other lasers in the past but the longer ray 5 20 watt diode laser engraver is still the laser that I love to use and it's done pretty much everything I have asked it for and hopefully in your guys opinion in previous videos it has brought some beautiful and creative designs to life and I encourage people to look at that brand the longer brand if they are shopping for their first laser or 3d printer I have both the longer laser engraver and the longer 3d printers so really really cool after we got everything cleaned and put back together if you guys are curious I was using the little vacuum I picked up to vacuum the model train layout in the model train and nostalgia room. It's also good for getting in there and cleaning up all of those little pieces that come out when you are laser cutting through some small and pieces and everything. So it was able to get everything if you can see everything in the vacuum there. So really cool. I'll be able to empty that and put it back in the model train and nostalgia room. But we ran two tests after we got everything put back together and I'm going to show those to you quickly. The first one was the basic material test that I run with everything. When I get a new piece of material and I'm curious how the laser will react to it. I've done cardboard. I've done exotics. I've done hardwoods. I've done poster board just to get a general idea of the speed, power, and settings I need. And this is a file that I quickly designed in the Lightburn software and you can see at the top it says material test and here under these three squares it's got 1p, 2p, 3p which represents passes. One pass, two pass, or three passes. Now the laser cleanly and crisply cut through with one individual pass there as you've seen and of course it would do two and three but some materials the density the thickness the glues that they're milled together with especially plywoods sometimes it takes multiple passes and as that laser gets older and if I'm laser cutting through something a lot more detailed than normal as opposed to this. Remember we done the Jaws fan art poster for the 50th anniversary of Jaws previously. I went through everything with two passes just to have the confidence that the laser, excuse me, was cutting through everything cleanly, crisply, and precisely. And then at the bottom it says speed 300 and power 89%, of course, with the air assist on. And then we ran the laser belt alignment test just to make sure that the belts the stepper motors and the pulleys were still in the proper tension and you can see because everything lined up symmetrically here and intersects properly that everything is dialed in. I know back when I had my longer Ray 5 5 watt laser engraver, the first laser engraver that ever came out in the workshop and I was happy to get it, longer sent it to me to review. I had been using it and using it and using it just to engrave stuff but it, it had got out of tension with the belts and when I ran this test on it my buddy Sam at Nighthood Creations provided me with this laser test file it was not connecting all of those hexagons and stuff was just out of line and then he came down and showed me how to retension the belts on that laser and as a matter of fact I have also replaced the belts on the longer Ray 5 20 watt laser that we have cleaned here today as I said. So really cool. You can see that it done this nice and crisply and both of these tests here were done on the quarter inch material that I like to use. So thank you to my buddy Sam for providing me with this laser belt alignment test. I really appreciate it. He always helps me whenever I need some advice or something when it comes to the laser engraver or 3D printing. So thank you buddy for that. And hopefully along the way from start to finish you guys picked up a tip trick or tidbit along the way for cleaning and maintaining a diode laser engraver. Again, as I said at the beginning, just like pretty much any other tool out in a garage or workshop, you need to periodically take time to clean your tools, your machinery, and give them a little TLC, a little tender love and care. The last time I cleaned that laser engraver was in was around Christmas of last year or early winter of this year and I was surprised by how much stuff came off of it. The grime and gunk and dirt and soot and everything from the laser engraver process and I knew the next time I wanted to do it I wanted to film it and bring it to video format for you guys to enjoy over here on the platform and hopefully you have from start to finish. That's going to be about all for this one. If you're new to the channel hopefully you'll click that subscribe button and also follow me across all my social media feeds under the artisan pirate name. As always links to contact me as well as all my social media feeds will always be linked down in the description box below these videos. That's about all for this one, and remember guys, if I can make it or do it, so can you guys. I'm the Artisan Pirate. Take care, and I'll see you guys real soon.